I told you last week that this week there's not going to be a pep talk because of, because of everything, like getting ready for Passover and everything. Um, but then on Shabbat, I remembered a story, and I knew a story from my childhood. Um, and I know that this is a story that I just had to share. Um, so I'm taking a few minutes off from Passover preparations, just like you are, um, in order to share this, what I think is a very special story. So when I was growing up, one of like the real, real highlights of my childhood, um, one of my favorite, favorite things of the, one of my favorite events of the year was Passover Seder. Every single year, my family, we would travel from Baltimore, um, we would travel um, up the East Coast to New York City, to the Upper West Side of Manhattan, um, to the house of, to the, to the apartment of my grandmother, uh, Florence Friedman. And I remember like every year, like just, uh, just what a, of exciting event it was to be like coming into my grandmother's apartment um, and to see all my cousins and my relatives and close family friends um, and sort of the hustle and bustle of you know of Passover Eve of like the hours before Passover. I remember I would come in and my grandmother would give me like a big bowl of chicken soup with a matzo ball and um, it was just like this amazing, and I love my cousins like I thought that they were just like the coolest and, um, and it was just like this really really wonderful event. So Passover, I guess like in most homes, then Passover in my home, the Friedman family, um, it was a really big, important event. Um, and uh, my grandmother, um, before I was born, before my grandfather passed away, she used to have over a hundred guests at every Seder, every night of the, for the Seder. Um, so, so you get a sense of like what a big deal it was for, for our family, for the Friedman family. So by the time I showed up on the scene, by the time I was born, my grandfather passed away when I was three. So I don't remember those huge Seders. Um, but it was still like a really, we, my, my grandmother still, she like made this beautiful, beautiful Seder. And it was really wonderful. So there's a funny thing about there's a funny thing about the Friedman family seder, um, and I guess maybe you could call it a minhag, like it, our family Friedman family tradition. Um, was that our family? So I grew up like in a conservative Jewish family, um, so um, so which give, which gives you a sense of like what kind of seder it was, like with a lot of English and like maybe um, not not everything 100 percent in in keeping with halacha. Um, a bit different, a, a very, very different than the Seder that I make today. Um, but, um, but, uh, but so, but we, but we did go through the, through the whole Seder and we did sing all the songs. Um, but there was one song that was the Friedman family's favorite song. And so whatever you're thinking, whatever Seder song you're thinking, then I guarantee you it's not that song. So probably you're thinking it was Hadgad, yeah, nope. Maybe you think it's Dayenu, nope. Maybe you think it's Manish Tana, the four questions. So we did sing those songs, but it wasn't like the theme song. It wasn't like the favorite song, like the favorite Friedman family Minhag tradition song, okay? So the, our favorite, favorite song, our favorite, favorite song was that we would sing the following song over and over and over, as though it was sort of like the chorus or like the theme song of the whole theater. And then we get like really excited and really this rousing rendition of the following song. The song was this. Hineni muhanu mezuman, hineni muhanu mezuman, hineni muhanu mezuman, hineni muhanu mezuman. Okay, so probably most of you know, most of you are familiar with the song. It means, I am ready and I am prepared. 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 So probably if you know the song, you know that there's supposed to be like another line that you're, you're supposed to say, uh, you're like, I am ready and prepared, and mitzvah that say, to fulfill the positive commandment of, you know, eating the matzah, eating, filling the positive commandment of eating the maror, filling the positive commandment of, you know, counting the omer. It's always supposed to be followed by you're ready prepared for something, for the commandment. But it's a, a funny thing about my family Seder that I guess, you know, probably, you know, maybe like, I don't know, 20 years before, 50 years before, 7 years before, somebody remembered that there was something that you were ready and prepared for, but by the time I was born, by the time I was growing up, we didn't, nobody remembered that there was something that you were, that you were ready and prepared for. <laughs> it's like you were ready and prepared, but we didn't really know for what. Okay, so... <laughs> It's sort of funny, and still today, like the Friedman family Seder, like this is like the highlight. Like everyone's saying, "Hindi mohanu mezuman." So, um, so 
that that so that 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 was the Friedman family Passover Seder theme song. So um, the reason I'm sharing this is because I think that this story, this story about the Friedman family Passover Seder theme song, I think in a way it really encapsulates. It really like perfectly represents my spiritual life as a child, as a Jewish American child. Okay. Because, you know, I grew up in a home, as I said, a conservative, like, we didn't keep kosher, we didn't keep, like, we weren't observant conservative, we, like, didn't keep kosher, we didn't keep Shabbat, we didn't keep most of I had, I had, I personally had a, maybe my parents had a, maybe a bit of a stronger connection, I personally had, like, a very, very limited connection with Judaism and Jewish life, um, but I, what I did feel is I did feel a tremendous sense of yearning. I felt a tremendous, tremendous sense of yearning for something, for something more, for something more than, you know, my Christian prep school and the homework and the SATs and the mall and the TV and sort of American culture circa 1980. I felt such tremendous yearning for something more, for something with meaning, for something beyond, for something just beyond myself, for something beyond sort of my, you know, American 1982 reality. And I felt such intense, intense yearning. And I think that this song represents that. You know, it's like, I am ready and I am prepared and I am ready and I am prepared and I am ready and prepared and I did not know for what. I didn't know for what. So, um, any of you who like have been following my blog or watching this pep for a while, then you know that about 20 years ago, um, I came to Israel and I ended, up, I, ended, I ended up at a yeshiva and I ended up falling in love with the Israel and Jewish life. And today, you know, today, the most important aspect of my life is, you know, being Jewish. Like, that is everything for me. You know, having Jewish children, having a Jewish marriage, and having a Jewish home, and being, you know, running JewishMom.com. It's like, Jewish life for me is everything. It's the center of everything. Um, and um, so, a lot has changed. A lot has changed, um, you know, over the past 20 years. Um, and this year, um, we're having actually, so we're getting ready for the Seder, and this year's a really exciting event for, for my family, because for years and years and years, I've been begging my parents to come and join us for the Seder. My parents come and visit us a lot, thank God, in Israel, and we always love it when they visit. Um, and, uh, so this year, um, then, uh, this year, like, we invited my parents again for the Seder, and my parents finally agreed. Why? Because I guess for the first time in history... The Friedman family is not making, uh, they're not making a family Seder together in America. Um, so, uh, so my parents said, okay, they're not making a Seder, so we'll come to your Seder. We'll come to the Weisberg family Seder. So I'm so, so, so excited. And I'm already really excited to sing. My husband and I are already really excited to sing, to integrate into the Weisberg family Seder, this Friedman family minhag. We're going to be singing. Hidani muhanu mezuman, hidani muhanu mezuman, over and over and over again. And I think that my parents will find it actually really fascinating, and we're going to tell them that there's actually an end to the song. And I think that they'll find that really, really interesting. And that's interesting probably as I did when I discovered that there's actually an end to the song um, that doesn't just end there, um, that there's something that we actually are getting ready and prepared for. Um, and um, so... Looking back, like, thinking about, like, my, you know, me, my Seder then and now, of course, like, there's many, 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 many differences between the way that I, this, my childhood family Seder and the Seder that we're doing now um, as sort of a family, like, living in Jerusalem, the, you know, my husband's a rabbi, so we're going to be doing with, like, a lot of, like, you know, talking about the deeper meaning of things and everything's going to be in Hebrew and, you know, reading this Haggadah in Hebrew. But there's one thing, there's one thing that's really, really the same, is that on Seder night, like Seder night is one of the most powerful, powerful nights of the year for prayer. It's one of the nights like that they say, you know, Chazal teaches like that, or the Chazal, and, like the Hasidic sources, and teaches like that the, you know, the, the, the heavens just open up for our prayers on Seder night. It's like such an intense, it's one of the highest, highest, highest spiritual nights of the year, mamash. And, um... So I'm sure that this Seder night, exactly, exactly like it did when I was eight year old, eight years old, or eleven years old, or fifteen years old, I'm sure I'm gonna feel just as intense yearning as I did then, just as I did then, you know. 
feel yearning so, so, so much that God should bless me, that I should be a good mother, that I should be a good wife, that I should be a good, you know, a good Jew, that I should be a good human being, that God should bless me every day, that I should know what He wants me to do, that I should understand and fulfill, like, His will for me in life, that I, that I should know how to live my life in a, will, in a way which is, which is consistent with His will and His desires for me. Um, and I want to bless. I have such a strong yearning that every day that I should, every day I should feel such a, that I should feel such closeness with Hashem. Please, please, please. And I think that I think that probably the yearning I feel today, the age of thirty-nine, is the same intensity of yearning. Maybe it's even more than I felt at the age of nine. The yearning that I felt then for something more also. Um, but the big difference, I think, the big big difference, I think now, like my seder this year and my seder, you know, I know, <laughs> twenty-five years ago, thirty years ago. Is so that this year, this year when we're going to be singing, Hineni Mohanu Mezuman, Hineni Mohanu Mezuman, Hineni Mohanu Mezuman, I'm going to feel such, such strong yearning. But today, the difference is that I'm going to be saying, I'm ready and prepared, I'm ready and prepared, I'm ready and prepared, and today I know for what. I'm going to bless all of you with a hug, kasher, with